Connell's never going to live that down. All right, talking about Connell. Uh, oh, looks like we are starting with him. Connell, how you're a pro game master. You're a professional, sir. You get paid. You wear a jersey. You have hours. You sign in. You sign out. It's on your W two. How you do you? What's that? So you got an agent. <laughs> there you go. Can you can you talk to book Connell on the show? I had to go through Baron. It takes like twenty percent of everyone um, goes through Baron at some point. In their life. That's fair. How do you accommodate different player preferences for battle maps and miniatures versus those who prefer theater of the mind? I, for the most part, don't have. Well, that's not true. The people that do like to do a lot of theater of the mind, I'll run a De Death in Space, the book that you sent me a couple years ago, the sci fi mm -hmm. one, yeah. which leans really heavy into uh, theater of the mind. And it's just, and they tend to run to uh, roll over to that one that they're more heavy into theater of the mind. And I make it work. I basically run it like Stargate Universe. Everything is going bad. Everybody hates you. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> I mean, it's called Death in Space, right? <laughs> right. Uh, for those who want to play um, with miniatures, battle maps, they tend to run to 5th uh, edition, Pathfinder, and stuff like that. So I just, it's just depending on what group I have. Wow. <laughs> Distracted Connell. <laughs> <laughs> There's not enough loop for that comment. Um... I tend, then I run uh, games that fit them. Um, I try to make sure the people who are playing in set games are a good fit because not every person is meant to play every game. Um, Call, of Call of Cthulhu is also another great theater of the mind. Now, I think you need to be slightly twisted to run one of those, but, you know, I'm slightly twisted and I have had some fun over the years. But you have to somewhat... <clears throat> cater to the type of game that you have when you have your players. That's how I handle it. This might be too poignant and it might seem like it's just a copy of the original question, but I guess I want to dive deeper into this. So what strategies do you use to satisfy players who prefer detailed visual aids without alienating those who don't? I don't run into that. If I'm playing Death in Space, they want more uh, description of how the ship looks. I will have, um, I always make sure uh, when I'm listening to that game, I print out of different types of ships from different movies, uh, from a Alien to Black Babylon 5 and everything in between. I just oh, give them an example. This is what you see outside your window, because uh, outside the uh, window of the ship. And it goes over well. Um, for Pathfinder, I get, come on, let's do more playing and I uh, playing than describing. And I normally come down on them to a certain degree because it's not just them at the table. There is seven other people that might want to know that the castle looks more like a cheese factory uh uh you know the cheese factory uh restaurant the natural castle i just kind of give them what i'm asked uh what they're looking for or try to give them what they're looking for okay bear how do you accommodate different player preferences for battle maps and miniatures versus theater of the mind i don't <clears throat> i run the game i'm running if you don't want to play Theater of the Mind, don't join my game. If I'm running a game that has tactical mapping in it and you don't like tactical mapping, well, you can go up in front. I was going to have tactical mapping in combat. Don't join the game. I, I'm tired of living in a world ever since 3rd Edition came in that I am expected to bend over backwards for the players. I am not. I'm here to do cooperative, emergent storytelling with the players. And if they have preferences and they pull the, oh, I'm not playing if, well, then don't play. Bye. You know, it's just the way it is. I don't feel a need to go out of my way to fill in all of their niches because I'm not being paid to do it. 
I'm taking yep. my time to work on this. I'm taking my time to develop this stuff. I'm taking my time to make sure there's a game. And if I'm being beholden to players to do what they want because they, well, they can write off up the model village and find another DM. Thank you very much. Oh, Bear doesn't know the saying. They F themselves off the bridge with Dan. There you go. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain what that is. I've explained it before. I've heard oh, it okay. for two years, man. Yeah, but that's three, four years. You know. Oh, shut <laughs> up. That's why I mentioned the, the endangered bird you don't like. <laughs> hmm. Um, I, I actually agree with you. I don't really have a good follow-up to that because that's kind of an absolutist answer. And I, but I agree with that absolutist answer on there. And it is one of the things, and it's funny because when I talk to others, so, so just so people know how I get my follow-up questions here, I come up with some out of my head. I come up with some based on what they say. I come up with some by uh, probing people that I work with. And I come up with some off. Of, actually, I take all that. I run it through ChatGPT. And I'm going to tell you this. ChatGPT, 100% of the time, if I just let it come up with questions, it would always be like, how do you incorporate the players into your story? How do you incorporate them? How do you allow the players? Like, like ChatGPT is even filled with this entire concept that you have to cater to every player's need. No, that's not. That's been trained on, that's been that? trained on Reddit, right? Well, probably, but but that but I agree with Bear hundred percent. If you don't want to sit in my game, if you have expectations of my game, we can talk about it for a moment. Maybe it is something I can accommodate if it isn't, isn't much of a difference. But no, you will be going to Ravenloft at some point, and I don't care if you don't like that. You you know, though my character wasn't built for that. Too bad. You will at some point do certain things that I want to have happen. And yes, I'm going to play mostly theater of the mind with some battle maps. So uh, you don't like it. There's the door. I don't lack for players when I do try to run a game. And so I'm, I'm not worried about this. It's this, this weird mentality and pardon me for, for diatribing here, but this, this mentality that no, no, you've got, you've got to conform to your players wishes. I literally do not. I am the game master. When I'm at the table, this is why when bears running the game, if he does something that I don't like, revolving my character barring every session that happening which it doesn't i suck it up so there's one attack or there's one fight or whatever the hell happened that i was like that isn't what i was doing but eh, whatever let's just move on it's not that big of a freaking deal you know incorporating with the group the verisimilitude of the world is much more important than but my backstory and i like i prefer this type of play you know if connell has to play with miniatures guess whose table he's not going to be at or Mr. he's Max. going to, what's that? This guy's. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Max is right. You know, you know, it, with mine, I think I could accommodate him a little bit because I do the hybrid. But there might be some times when he's going to be like, "Hey, can you draw this out?" I'll be like, "No, this isn't important enough to draw out." You know, and if that's not good for him, then he doesn't sit at my table. I will never sit at Bruce Lombardo's table. I will never yeah. do it. But. He runs a skirmish game that has has players that have been playing for how long, and people love it. Yep. You know he's not going to cater to my style. You know, so anywho, uh, so so I, I filled in some time there because there's really no real counter to what Bear said because it, because that is an absolute. I don't mean this in a bad way. That was an absolutist answer, but I think it's a necessary answer. And the worst part is I'm gonna have the same answer, right? Just like I don't either. Like I completely, you know, I have like I run my game a certain way, and it's a very specific way, right? And if you come to my table, you have to know that this is the way we rule, we, we, we run, right? And you have to accommodate to that. And if you're not fit for my table, it doesn't mean that I think you're a bad person or do you're 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 a stupid guy or that I hate you or whatever, right? Just like no, like. I'm maybe not like you're not right for my table. You're not gonna be happy at my table either, right? Just like, like we're I'm doing both of us a favor by saying no. That's not the right fit, right? Just like, it's just like you're not entitled to my table, and even even then, like I said, you won't be happy there. So there's plenty of our table. Find the right group for you, and if you cannot find the right group for you. Maybe you have to look at something about yourself. Maybe right? you should learn how to become a game master then. Or yeah, or that yeah. <laughs> I did, but maybe you should maybe you should also look at your attitude, bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what ChatGPT that was trained on you sounds like. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, no, don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> don't go there. Don't go. I will be blocked from YouTube and everywhere else. Let's move. <laughs> Here's a recipe for what to eat after the apocalypse. <laughs> Now, you have to actually consider this more than... Actually, did I start with you? I started with you, didn't I? 
Yeah. You yeah, I did it, start yeah. with you. Well, how about this? Let me let's say let have see you answer a couple of these. Fun. By the way, this is free for all, so all you guys can jump in. But I'm going to start with Connell for each one. Um, uh, how do you handle situations where player expectations for visual aids clash with your GMing style? I tell them that this is what I got. Uh, if they don't like it, I'm sorry. Go talk to the cashier; they'll cash you out. Um, I'm not going to. Yeah, I do sound like I give. I just bend over backwards, but that's not true. I don't come. I don't bend over backwards. I give oh, them. It's okay, I'm not gonna have to king chain. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> this Justin Connell GM banned from school for inappropriate a, behavior. <laughs> I have a set amount of room that I will give. I uh, will uh, give in. Then once you hit the wall, it's just I'm sorry. There's there's a door. I'm not the DM for you. Come and back. You know me. when because they're clearly drawn on the map. <laughs> sorry. sorry. Be nice. Uh, how do you com- how do you communicate with the players to understand and accommodate their preferences or at least their their leanings effectively? I have a conversation with them if they're new. I'll pull them to the side and explain. Uh, you know, this is my fantasy game. This is my sci fi game. And uh, depending on what you're interested in, this is what might suit uh, best for you. I mean, I have to be professional. I can't eat. Uh, un mentally wet, healthy people like uh, Mr. Max, um, who did not know we were live at that point. Um, so I try to be respectful, professional, and courteous to the situation. If there's a point where I have to ask somebody to leave, I don't pull punches. I talk to them as grown up and as people. That's how I deal with it. And that's why I will never be a paid DM. <laughs> well, if I was a paid DM, I'd just say, this is the game I run. You're paying for my game. And if you don't like it too bad, I wouldn't be that rude about it. But that's essentially what it would be. It's like, I'm, I'm not here to cater to you. You're here to enjoy my style of gaming or go pay somebody else to run the game for Most you. Most of know. the people I, I, I game for are kids. And I'm not going to be that dick oh, that's... DM that ruins it for them. That, you know what? Kids, absolutely. And we. T- why weren't you here for when we talked about role-playing games for children? Because uh, he's we, not allowed oh, to 25 feet of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, My name's not Mr. Max. Knock it off. Um, <laughs> anywho, I, I haven't seen him in a while, so I want to say hello to uh, Forge and Brush Gaming. We actually talked about him earlier. He was the yeah. game master I was talking about for the Pathfinder game. So uh, check out his channel, Forge and Brush Gaming, if you have not had the opportunity to do so. Uh, I don't get there nearly as much as I want, but uh, absolutely uh, check his channel out. And hopefully he finds some time to join us on uh, on Veterans Day for the Veterans Day 24-hour live stream. But, uh, okay, uh, so... Just so folks know, this Sunday on RPG Digest, we're going to be covering Absolute Power. We're going to talk about the dice system and the co- the combat mechanics of the game. And that's really it. Uh, Heathen Dog is not prepared for this. W- no, <laughs> I said that completely wrong. Heathen Dog was preparing his game for this uh, for the 24-hour stream on Monday, so it doesn't have a segment ready this week. Because remember, he was on vacation and so forth. So uh, we'll probably answer some comments, You know, ch- uh, talk with chat a little bit. So really, the only gaming-related thing we're going to be talking about is Absolute Power. And we're going to dive into the dice system and the combat mechanics of it. Next Friday on the 15th of November, on this uh, Some Rando RPG live stream, we're going to once again approach the business of tabletop RPGs. Um, but I have nobody sign up. It's funny. I had 12 people sign up for the first one and then complain when I didn't pick them. And now I have nobody that signed up for this one. So maybe next week I have off. I don't know. But we'll find out. Uh, if you want to sign up for it, if you have published... I don't care if you're an indie publisher. I don't care if you're a major publisher. But if you've published a tabletop role-playing game, come and let's talk about uh, the process that people, you know, uh, writing the game, publishing the game, et cetera, et cetera. I think Bear's running his game next week, though. That's that's why he can't be here. Um, and we're going to have the topic again. Like, these topics aren't one and done. These topics will occur over the course, you know, maybe a year later or whatever, so that other people can get in on them. Anyway, uh, so we'll see. Uh, uh, he's going to be on another show, Crafty. He's picked another one to join. And let's look at our Super Chats, because I think we got one in. Yes, we did. Actually, let's start with the not Super Chat. We'll thank the Super Chat last. So, says, yes, when players imagine something new, say yes. Make them comfortable first. 
to invent new details before you start pegging them down a notch. Well, that's too wild. That doesn't fit. <laughs> Fair disagree is okay. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I don't know if the word pegging would be the word I'd use, but sure, why not? Okay, come on, guys. <laughs> what do you mean, guys? That was all him. <laughs> yep, there you go. So and, and, and then Crafty, of course. In the bad spot. <laughs> I think, I think uh, like, a lot, of, a lot of people, like, when you... I think, like, a lot of GM, like, train their player to be, like, unwittingly. They train their player to be, like, a passive, right? To be, like, a... Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that word passive. Okay. Because like they the player want to come with an idea and then say, oh no, actually you cannot do that. And they find reason why not. Like they wanna, you know, I say sometimes like cock block your player, like don't cock block your player, right? Because like and then like, well, I tried to came something with with something creative, and then you say you blocked me. What would be like the, the cleaner way to say that? Um we used to say stonewalling. Okay, don't Gay stonewall. <laughs> No, no, but, but like they come with something creative and then you shut them down. Well, at some point they won't come with creative stuff anymore. Well, there's a difference between creative and trying to influence the game universe and add stuff to their advantage, and you know that. Mr. Yeah. Max. Yes. You and that's know part of the difference. No, no, and 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 we talk about that, and like you know, we talk about it in the rules as well. Like you don't, you shouldn't like just add stuff to your advantage. Like right? you add stuff to fit in the world. But, you know, it's different. So, I've always said, you don't go with what's possible, you go with what's plausible or probable. And the reason for that is all things are possible in somebody's imagination. I can I can think of some wackadoodle stuff that makes literally no sense for the world, and no game master should ever agree to it, ever. But if it is possible, and if it is plausible within the verisimilitude of the setting... Then okay, then then I generally agree that there might not be any harm in that. But also, and I don't know if this directly bears concern, but you know, kind of piggybacking on what Bear said, uh, I don't want you all of a sudden. Oh, and I go to the corner of the room, and there's a sword plus two there. Like, no, no. Yeah, exactly. that's extreme I wouldn't... nonsense. Yeah, no, that's it, extreme. It, it, but, but like, and, and but, I'm intention. I'm using that for effect, you know, being extreme for effect. But you get the idea, uh, where it's like they intentionally. Because I always look at angles, and I know people give me crap for this, but I don't care. I always look at if a player comes up with something that hasn't been put in the game, or comes up with a class or skill or a feat or whatever. What is your angle? Because players are oftentimes trying to beat the game master, not have challenges in the game. Beat the game master. Yep. Well, guess what? When there's seven of you at the table and one of me, chances are you can beat me. <laughs> well, you know, you can always like rock fall and everybody die. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I mean, yes. I mean, I get, but you, you get the point. Seven, seven yeah. minds are generally going to be and, better than one. And that, that's also a point that we make like very firmly, like, oh, at least at least I, I do, right? Just like we're not doing a competitive game. Like, we're like, I'm, yes, at GGM, I'm going to bring challenge to your character. But we're not like, and your character can be opposed to stuff in the world and to NPCs and stuff like that. But as player, we're not opposed, right? Very different thing. Like we're all together in this to have a cool experience. Well, I just don't, I don't agree with the player describing what they see. That's what I disagree with. That is the point of contention for me. Yeah. I, as the GM, you describe what the players see. They decide how they interact with it. Character agency, narrator agency. And there's a line between those two things. A lot of the immersive role-playing techniques is akin to method acting. It's just people, uh, my character enters the room and glances about and notices the lamp by the bed. And it's she, shut up. That would be way job. too much. That would be it's way too much. It's your job as a player to do that. It's your job as a player to react to how yes. the GM describes the room. And if yes. everyone knows their role and stays in their lane, the game's going to go really, really smoothly. Now, you might have a fantastic group of people that you play with, Mr. Max, and I'm not yeah. doubting that you do, that are all able to be super mature and super do all these things. The problem is not everybody gets that. Yeah. Some of us get Connell. Hi, Connell. You've been quiet for too long. <laughs> well, also, some um, a lot of people get just straight up improv actor, the whole yes, if, yes, if, you know. Indeed, yes. But the yeah. problem is, is that as a result of that, you're going to wind up with contention at some point in time, or the GM's expected to just roll over and show his stomach. 
you know? I'd be like, do what you want. I don't care. I'll just play Come on, scratch my belly. Scratch my belly so I can kick my leg. <laughs> you know, so it is a trade. It is a trade of power. It is a trade of authority. It is a trade of influence. But if you remember GM agency, character agency, they are separate things. GM's I got, I got... job is to describe the scenes, describe the NPCs' reactions, and to tell the players what is happening in the world around them and arbitrate any rules conflicts. Character agency that the player brings is they decide how their character interacts with that stuff without the GM telling them how they interact with yeah. that stuff. The big thing, the big thing we say, like, is uh, if it's obvious, right? Like, you know, if you ever seen in the kitchen. And I say, and I want to say, like, oh, I open the kitchen door. Right? Is there a knife there, right? It's obvious that they're like, unless there's a reason for, right? Nobody's been living there for twenty years, whatever, right? Just like, but like, if you like, you just you break in the house, you in the kitchen, you open the like, obviously there's gonna be a knife. So we just say like, well, you you don't need to ask me. You can just open the the kitchen door and pick and take a knife, right? That's fine, right? That's if it's so if it, if the answer is gonna be obviously yes, well. Just you know, that's you can just like skip the step. By the way, one guy is not smarter than five guys. Have you ever worked in a corporation? <laughs> uh, I, I, where one I guy, do allow yeah, this like... this type of character agency, I actually like that term, is uh, when it comes to things like uh, one of, one of the things I'm known for in in my games, and some of my old players used to look forward to this stuff is. Uh, rumors or wives tales you know the pot of gold under the rainbow come up with these uh i don't know why superstitions there we go come up with these superstitions in the world and they may or may not be true but i absolutely will allow you to come up with things like that because i still have the authority to say nope or yep or maybe it's not what you thought it was maybe it's not a pot of gold under the rainbow and a leprechaun maybe it's a portal to another dimension ravenloft uh and you end up you know something else happening but it gives me a lot of flexibility and it allows them to incorporate their characters into part of the world so i like doing things like that on a more general level but uh i, I again i stand by the idea that i'm never going to go to a drawer and say i grab the knife out of the drawer uh, i'm going to say if there's a knife in the drawer i grab it because the game master is the ultimate authority. And while I'm not a punk, because I saw somebody say, well, I'm not a pawn in the game master's world. Well, I'm not a pawn in the game master's world. It is the game master's world. And I have to react. It's just like when I go driving to work, I'm not a pawn on the road, but I do have to react to all the other assholes who are in the, <laughs> that, yeah. that, that drive around here. So, yeah. I think the problem I, is, is that if you have a bad GM who has been a dictator or has done these things to you, you're very gun shy about it moving forward and you see it everywhere, right? It's yeah. the, the once bitten twice shy scenario, right? Where you're going to my, always... my. It's called oh, now God. who's singing. <laughs> Just not well. I wouldn't call that singing. But the, point, the point being is that you got to take each situation as they come. Sure. React yeah. to them in real time. Also, I got to, I got to say one thing. Like you know, like I do like to play with players that can also GM, right? So they know, like you know, they've been through the ringer as well, right? I think that's important. Like, I think it's a it's a good thing to be able to sit on both sides of the table. Connell wants to say something. Yeah, Con Con Connell, go ahead. I know you made a comment earlier that me as a player might not fit in your game. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I don't know. That. Oh, yeah, we're gonna find out for uh, for Bears game. Holy shit! Um, but that's I. I want to say I. I think I'm not alone in this. When I'm willing to be uncomfortable, I'm willing to go sit down a verb uh, a, via situation in your game, Max or Mister uh, uh, Mister Max or Bears game, and be uncomfortable and see how that world, how that game runs. If it's all theater of the mind, yeah, I'm gonna be kind of lost for a while, but I will make it work. As a player, I think that's got to be someone of the goal of the situation. Do I rather sit down at a table that have uh, miniatures? Yeah, because I like miniatures. But am I also willing to sit down at a table where it's all theater of the mind? Hell yeah. Because just because there's no miniature does not mean it's not a good game. Mm -hmm. And I see how I pigeon my ho oh. pigeonhole myself in this conversation earlier on. Yeah. But I think players oh. should be willing to try both sides. I truly I, do. 
I agree with you, Connell. Yep. To a certain extent, because at some point also when you've been doing when you've been in this hobby for like for a long, long time, you've been in different game, different setting. You did make yourself uncomfortable in the past, right? So you know you have a better idea of what you like, what you don't. And at some point, also when we're adults and stuff like that, you're gonna get there at some point. Like we have very limited time for hobbies, so we have to be selective, right? Oh, yeah. So there's that as well, right? Just like a... But I rather give a player a chance and have it just not work out than not give a player a chance and it turns out to be a great uh, great person at your table. Uh, no, what I'm what I mean is you as a person as well, right? Especially like not only not only like we have limited time for role playing. Oh yeah. But also like the time for role playing is also competing with other hobbies and other activities, right? At some point you said, well, there you know is what? Yeah, no other I hobby. Could, yeah, I was gonna say, what are in... other hobbies and other activities? What are you talking about? Oh man, I got what I do. Okay, no, no, I that, know. that was a rhetorical question. <laughs> guys, guys, that was a rhetorical <laughs> You are well, no, my actually, wonder wall, time, wall, Max time. Gallagher. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me get the let me get this out. Go, go ahead, I Connell. Do medieval reenactment. I do know what it looks like if some a line is charging you. I do know the distance with a sword or a glaive or a bow and arrow. I physically know what these look like. So sitting at a table where it could be theater mind, maybe this uh, other hobby I've been in would feed into that. You know, it's it's not yes and or no but. It's just it, I don't know. It all works out in the wash one way or the other. Uh, real real quickly, I'm, I'm not reading every single line of chat there, but there apparently is something going on. I just want to remind folks, uh, I'm, I'm on two minds here. I'm a free speech absolutist, but I can't do that. So the rule is this. No personal attacks against a panelist or a chatter. Other than that, the chat is fine. Well, obviously, don't spam porn, whatever. But so uh, just we'll leave, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. But uh, as long as you're not not personally attacking a panelist or a chatter, you're fine because, you know, I know too much to some people's chagrin. I'm an adult, and if you want to say poo-poo words, I'm okay. Yeah, that was a misunderstanding of text. Per was saying, at my okay. table, be respectful. <clears throat> and Zonalar thought he was tone policing about being respectful of his Okay, I, I don't have that. That's why I'm looking over here because yeah, yeah. I have my starred chats over here, so I'm not like that. Just want to be very clear. And my mods know that's why nobody's been banned. Or actually, I did have to uh, ban somebody earlier for random nonsense, but uh, um, so. But that's okay. Yeah. So now, you got you got, you got uh, Kirafty Matt in there. He'll ban everybody. Now back to the I, conversation point at hand because I let you guys oh, talk. I, for, now oh, I have something I want to add. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Connell, <laughs> you're playing. Um, what's that character I want you to play in the the, the superior game? That could be a really good challenge challenge for you. Oh, the Boy Scout. Um, yeah, I, uh, the arrow arrow something. Uh, arrow arrow not. Arrow okay. Aeronaut is flying over the city. It's a beautiful sunny afternoon. He's just keeping an eye out for things. His cape flapping in the breeze behind him. The smells of the neighborhoods as he flies over, filling his senses. The sun will keeping him warm despite the, the general brisk chillness of this autumn day. Suddenly below him in a plaza that spreads out in front of a massive building, he sees gentlemen in ski masks running through the plaza by the fountain with guns. What do you do? I he's turn, Malachi. <laughs> I turn, I turn around and fly down to get a ah. better. Okay, so you turn around, and you fly. Did you need me to put a map out with the plaza and know how many feet they were away and what what color their miniatures? No, and that's what theater of the mind can be. It can be very simply a back and forth conversation between the player and the GM about what's happening, what reactions happen to their choice of actions, what reactions the player make to said reactions, et cetera, et cetera, fueling and firing it forward. At any point in time, the player can say, how far away am I from him? Oh, you're at shooting distance. Okay, well, I want to close that distance and punch him in the mouth. All right, you can do that in one action. Go ahead and roll for your punch. You know, like, well, it's a superhero game, dumbass. <laughs> And they're bank robbers. Uh, but the point is, is that <laughs> shut the fuck up, you French prick. <laughs> but you can you can use theater of the mind in the exact same way you use the map. It's just you have to picture it in your head. Now. Oh, I, I get that. I truly do get that. I as I'm I as Mr. Max said earlier, I've been playing a certain way for so long. I am comfortable with 
the way I do it. But at the same time, I'm willing to put myself in an uncomfortable situation to have new experiences when it comes to RPG. Real quickly, dissenter in that uh, earlier, I don't know if you were watching at that point, but earlier Connell actually said that's what he does. So uh, it's not really a straw man when it was mentioned earlier, but you probably weren't here for that because I just noticed your chat started recently. So uh, I just want to put that out there. So uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been coughing too man. much. It's a total straw man. I'm, I'm, I'm just making Cottle look bad because I have nothing to stand on. <laughs> um, all right, let's. I want to move on to the next question because we still are the next chat here because we actually have a super chat that's been waiting for a long time. Plus, uh, we have one more question to get through for tonight. Uh, so here we go. Theater of the Mind. A TTRPG is not a war game, or better said, should not. Bear, you can re respond to should later. Uh, said should not be a war game. Miniatures became a thing quite late to make more money, my opinion. I don't think that's true because it derived from wargaming. I want to agree with your statement, but I derive from wargaming. I think role-playing has actually evolved out of it. That's my, that's my take. What are your guys' thoughts? I think you're I right. Think miniatures were there from the start. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right on that. The last well, one. I think it's all somewhat of a money grab. I mean... To a certain degree, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, honestly, no. There, there's some truth to that. And game design has taken, or not? I shouldn't say game design. In my opinion, many games have taken a hit because of that, because they prioritize money over the niche of the hobby or their own their own niche, so to speak. One of the few companies that has not done that is Palladium. Now, people have thoughts about that, but Palladium has stayed true to itself. You know. Um, <clears throat> And not your echo says, I think a lot of these streams really emphasize how important it is to know who you are as a gamer, taste, must, etc., and be patient and find a group that works for you, DM and players alike. Yep. Absolutely agree. And that, that's why also it's valuable to have like people with different opinions. And like, you know, you know, on my channel, I promote a very specific type of gaming. And I often say, like, if it's not for you, that's fine. But what I propose is that if you've been playing the game and you feel like you're not getting like it's not scratching your itch or you think you might you're not getting what you're looking for, maybe you can try something different, right? Like Connell was saying, right? Go challenge yourself, try a different style of playing stuff like that, right? Maybe it's gonna hit, maybe it's not gonna hit. Maybe you have to go a different direction. Maybe you have to go like more war game. Maybe maybe role playing is not what you're looking for. Maybe you're looking for a tactical skirmish, skirmish game, game. Right? skirmish game, yeah. yeah. Well, earlier when I was asking about modern battle maps, Skippy up here said, Hero Clicks. Dude, yeah. I have exhausted the Hero Clicks maps. Oh, I, I'm not. sure. I just, it was a and quick they don't answer. have as many locations as you would think they have. Oh. They have more insane woo woo locations than they do actual real locations. So, again, that's one of the problems with the uh, battle maps is unless you have the ability to make your own battle maps that are satisfying for you, therefore, for my level, I like really good maps. Um, it's very hard for certain games because once again, D&D runs this hobby and D&D is the 800 pound gorilla in the room. Every conversation will end up being about D&D when you start talking about role playing, every accessory, every mini, everything just becomes about freaking <laughs> D&D at some point. But it's understandable. Those of us who play the niche games, those of us who play the niche time games, you're this one drink. Uh, I don't have a drink. No, I'm not trying to be argumentative when I make this comment. Um, you're very much a big opponent uh, about the JI, uh, uh, AI graphic designer uh, for your stuff. Isn't there a map building one? I mean, I don't know if there is one, but I know Chat GPT and uh, Copilot. There is the uh, Dungeon Alchemist that you can see on the uh, for it's very focused on dungeon map, from, but it was like our, our early access. Uh, but that's you know, since we're talking about battle map, maybe that's something that's worth mentioning. Uh, well, well, sorry, well, uh, well, are we not getting paid to mention it? So maybe we shouldn't then. Well, no, I, 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 I have I have that for a different uh, for uh, for a different stream in the future. Now oh, speaking okay. of paid, what was that super chat you got mentioned? Okay, well, uh, yes. Let me delete that. Boom. Super chats from Weird Guy 564. Thank you for the $10. By the way, we're at $40 of the 100 we need for the giveaway. Uh, Law Dog what's that? Nothing. I'm just being a dick. I'm like, where's Law Dog? Where? Yeah. <laughs> He'll pop in at the end and make it. No, I, I can't count on that. He's donated so much to us. Uh, 
So I have to play Theater of the Mind. My only regular player these days, my son, when he does want to play RPGs. Uh, lo oh, long car rides when mom drives. I really don't have a choice in that situation. I think that's a good way of training Theater of the Mind. And I would say that Theater of the Mind, guys correct me if I'm wrong, is to some degree a, a muscle that needs to be massaged and trained. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's something that somebody was saying earlier, like, oh, what if you're not good at description? It was like, I think like it was Baron and the Max discussion. Like, yes. Like, and he said, like, practice, practice. Yeah, yes, I agree with that. Like, it doesn't, like, you don't need to be the best from the first time. Like, you know, you're playing a game. Hypothetically with your friend, right? Of Hopefully. They have to understand that you're there. You're trying to do something. You might not be great at it, right? But you're there to having a good time. Like, you're going to get better over time. Like, like <laughs> don't fucking join a game. Expect, like, you know, the guys say, like, it's one of your buddies, right? Say, oh, you know, I'm going to run this game for you. I haven't done it before. Like, bear, please bear with me, right? Just, like... You know, nobody's gonna start and be like the top GM on the first try. Sometimes you mess up, and you know. You I, I will actually it. add to that and say it's not like riding a bike either. And I know this because yeah, when I went after many years worth of campaigns, a, a time in my life where I was playing one day a week and running six days a week, like just you know, excessive play, 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 run, 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 run. Um, I took some time off because I had to do some professional growth. And while I did some one shots, yada, yada, irrelevant, but, you know, so I was still peripherally around, but I wasn't really in when I ran my first campaign after that, it bombed. The hobby had changed. The people's expectations had changed. Like so many things had changed that I wasn't used to. Now, nowadays I would say, screw that. You are going to play my way, not them. But I had to figure out what was going on. And that campaign bombed. I also wasn't as good as I remember myself being in the past in terms of description and uh, handling things on the fly. All these things are things that you don't have to do it every single day of your life or you're going to lose it. But if you take 10 to 15 years away, you can't just jump right back and be like, I'm ready. And it's just not going to work that way. The first time you... The first time matters to a man. Uh, anyway, the point <laughs> is, is that basically the first time I ran a, a game was a Star Trek game, and they were, I was a mirror universe adventure. So I went and I took all these uh, Star Trek comics and I traced and I made my own costumes and stuff like that to show them visual aids. And they laughed. They were like, oh, that's funny because the poses were weird and they were just being silly teenage players. Two years later, I'm running a, my, my Marvel campaign, my superhero campaign set in the Zenith universe. And I just held up a picture of a villain. As you walk into the room, as the lights come on, you see him. And I held it, and they knew who he was. Three players got up and ran out of the room. And were like, we're not coming back in until he's gone. Put the picture down. We're not coming back. Because they, <laughs> they, they had an emotional attachment at that point in time. So the skill I started with eventually became a skill I was better with. Because I understood mm -hmm. the difference between just having a visual aid or having a visual aid that has had something attached to it or something that matters. So, for example, while I'm writing Final Age right now, I went through all these monsters I created for Final Age. And I thought, oh, this is going to cost me a fortune in art. And then I thought, funk that very much. I'm just going to write a very narrative description of what it looks like and let the GMs describe it to their players and let the players decide what they look like in their minds. Yeah. Because we don't do that enough anymore. I agree. Every RPG product is stuffed to the gills with art. And even like that's something also like I, I'm, you know, I, I had a discussion with my player and with my GM actually at the recently about like the AI art. Like I think like now it's too available. And even for your game that people are just gonna generate image for prop, at some point it become too much. And now I'm not in the mind of my character anymore. I'm looking at a picture. And I'm that's playing why I play, I don't like battle maps right there. Yeah, I'm playing. I'm playing. Where's Waldo? Right. I'm looking at the picture, sc like scrying it, looking at what I can interact with, like what I can click on, like you know, or like a yeah. monkey island. I do right? like an initial picture of a creature, a monster, a villain, or or whatever. Uh, so, just to get the, get the the. I can't talk all of a sudden. I, I I like that for the visual. I really do. What I don't like is when they're really cartoony. If I'm yeah. playing, you know, if I'm playing in like a Dungeons and Dragons game and somebody shows me some, you know, a puff the magic dragon and here's the track, I'm like, you just lost me right there. But uh, Bear, Bear is doing some improv right now. We do have one question left to go. And now that we Please, are officially. What is the question? And now that we are officially over time. <laughs> you're happy now we got you over time. Now you're not complaining about it going too fast. <laughs> Finally, you can complain about it taking too long. <laughs> um, 
And and one more th- thing for some of the folks that are new in chat. Thank you very much. Uh, the idea is to not be an echo chamber here. The idea is for you to disagree with the people in chat. Disagree here. Just do it respectfully. You guys have been doing that. Um, it, it's not meant to be one size fits all, even though I will tell you there is a way you should play. There is a right way to play. Deal with it. Um, and if you're playing at your table differently, you're playing wrong. But that's okay. You're allowed to play wrong. Yeah. Uh, that's... <laughs> People that's that's that something way. that's something that people like need to realize, right? You like even if we say we play wrong, like doesn't mean that you're wrong, right? It's all right if this is the way you enjoy, right? Yeah. You know? Like people like uh, Crafty was saying that. Like, a damn on question already. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm fine. I'm Bear, here's your question: sorry. How do you Thank manage you. group group dynamics when some players prefer theater of the mind? I don't know I why that question it. seems like it's cut off. There should have been two parts there. I remember yeah, yeah, writing yeah. two parts. Well, how do you how do you handle the group dyman- dynamics when players prefer one type over another? Is really what that was supposed to be. I don't know why that came out. That well, way. I think we answered that in the case where we yeah. said find the game that fits you, because I'm not changing my game because you want that and I don't. Like, I, oh, I can wow, I didn't realize like... this when I put the see that I should have looked. At, I didn't have time to look at the questions today. This question is literally just sort of the opposite of the one before, and it makes no sense because of the same freaking answers. Yeah. Okay, well, the show's over. Um, Yay, <laughs> masturbation no, time. Well, no. Let's go through. Let's go through some of the follow-ups here. Okay, so okay, we've already talked to Connell about this, but let's see if we can make the answer concise. Bear, we'll start with you again. How do you handle players who may struggle with theater of the mind? You're asking me. You're asking Connell. Uh, no, I'm, a- I'm asking you to start. Uh, uh, so Connell, Connell struggles with theater of the mind. How, how do you handle that? Since especially he's going to be in your game. So what I like to do is I like to create a comfortable environment for them. Uh, pour them a glass of wine, light a couple of candles, maybe maybe some incense, you know, get them relaxed, put on some soft jazz, and then slowly slide them into it. Maybe a little neck rub. Are you trolling, sir? I can't remember because uh, Mr. I'm Max absolutely started... fucking trolling. I throw you in the Damn goddamn it. pool. I was hoping for the massage. Too bad. I push you in the fucking pool, and I go swim, you legless, armless fuck. Swim. <laughs> exactly. But don't be afraid to ask for help. I don't know, man. Just wiggle around. To Try to float. <laughs> don't say, hey, can I? Don't be worried about saying, hey, can I do this or can I do that? Absolutely ask those questions. Don't feel like you can't ask questions. Always feel like you know you can ask questions. And a good GM will answer them in ways that will help you do more and be more and achieve more and as you get super comfortable and you understand theater of the mind playing hop on over into a 4d game where you're not allowed to ask questions and you'll be a pro but you can describe your own world exactly (laughs) um it's all stages i'm the middle step between these two so so Uh, at, at my tables it's always been the players help the new people we didn't kick out. Like, you didn't say I. You said he. We do first person here, sir. And that is something. It is a requirement at my table that you do first person. But we don't beat you up for it. Somebody, after the fact, it depends on... Uh, it really depends on the situation. Most people won't say it the second you did. Ah, don't say I. But after that, hey, uh, next time, just, you just say it as your character. Don't ask, can I do this? Have Tell me what your character's doing. I don't actually don't care about the questions. I'm just saying, uh, am I allowed to talk to this guy? Just talk to them, you know. That that's that's how we describe it. The players at the table really help set the tone uh, for our style of play, and it's never it's never caused a problem. We've had people from all walks of life, all all styles, all backgrounds, whatever. And yeah, I'm hardcore about those rules and the fact that this is the expectation. But my God, I screw up my own rules sometimes. <laughs> you know, yeah. it happens. Just do your best to stay in the headspace of your character and, and role playing. Yeah, I do require you know first Don't, person like. You don't have to have like performance anxiety. We're there together to play a game, right? We're not like there to, you know, you're not there to impress people or good or, you know, you are at whatever as a GM or a role player. Like, you know, you can relax. There's rule. You try to play along, you try to follow the rules and you try to play, like, do what expect, expected of you. But if you do your best, you can screw up sometime. You'll get better over time. Don't mm-hmm. worry about it so much, right? We're not going to mean, we're not going to, we're not going to whip you, right? I'm not gonna eat you if you can freaking do it. Just like so. Well, I mean, if you're into that. See, now you got me doing it. God dang it! No, yeah, but like I'm not in not in the way you're thinking. 
the oh my. <laughs> Well, the, yeah, it's, we're just playing a game, guys. You know, just like so. Don't don't have like it. Yeah, exactly. I want to put this on on the on the screen. This is what we're going for. Um, so I, I, I this is the first time I've seen you. So my assumption is you haven't been around. If you have been, my apologies. Uh, on Sundays we do game streams. So uh, what I mean by that is we cover a game. I'll be talking about Absolute Power. Unfortunately, Heathen Dog won't be doing anything this week. But you know we do a deep dive into one game and an overview of of a supplement or something for another game. So that's purely game book we'll call it system mechanics whatever talk and then on fridays we have these uh panel discussions so yeah and and my goal it doesn't always happen but my goal is to have people on that don't agree but also can have fun with the fact that they don't agree you know so uh and i think you know connell hasn't been on in a long time but he was on the old show when it was complete rant fest so you know he he, he can handle it he can handle it but no this is exactly what we're going for and i, and I hope that the word spreads out to folks, not about me, but about that. Hey, you know what? If you want some food for thought, Max, Max Liao is retarded. But you know what? Connell's got some really awesome stuff to say. Uh, listen to him. It's, there's no problem. Nice if, you can get something, if you can get something from any of these guys, then it's a win. And also, like, I want to say something about, like, you no, know, sometimes we can, sometimes we're rough about each other. We can, like, call each other name. We can, like, argue and stuff like that, right? Just like, we have, you have to understand, people, we're all friends and we talk to each other outside the show oh and on Discord, right? Just like, like if you think there's drama between us, you don't know what's happening, right? The after shows get weird. So we can get upset at one another. That's all right. That happened, right? And then maybe we bitch a bit, right? And stuff like that. But then, like, you know, it, it happens. We're just like, there's we're not, not pussies. And... There's not Someone... one person in this show right now that would not physically sit down at their table or go have oh, yeah. a beer with. Yeah. Uh, oh, I have real friends, like friends that I've had since longer than I've known any of you weirdos, going all the way back 30-some years, right? That I would absolutely go see a movie with, have a beer with, you know, give them shirt off my back, go chop wood with them, whatever. But that dude's not sitting at my gaming table. Yep. And that's fair. Well, Doesn't the question is, is, how long will I be in Bear's game? Because Bear and a few other people don't think that this guy this guy right here could be a superhero with a heart of gold. And I uh, tend to agree with them, but we'll figure it out. That's yeah. a way to face the challenge. Self-sabotage in advance. <laughs> and that leads me to something I've avoided doing all night, which is to quote Dean Werner, fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life. So. I have been. Well, speaking <laughs> of being drunk, Max, Monday, <laughs> I might be seeing you. <laughs> Oh yeah! Don't get too good. Last year's twenty-four hour live stream got weird. <laughs> toward toward, toward the end, fun. Well, um, before we do that, let me finish this show up, and then we can go into the more let down our hair part. Of, you know, where, where we talk about things, invite a couple other people in. Um, so. Before we go into Super Chats, which we don't have, so we'll just move on to the next phase. Uh, let's remind the panel or the folks out there about our panelists. So uh, who are you, Connell? Once again, who are you? What do you create? And where can people find you on the Internet, except for you don't want to tell anybody because you're not doing anything on the Internet right now? My name is Connell the Cigar DM. I talk about gaming, the uh, gaming being role playing, role playing or other hobbies I have. I'm considered the cigar DM because, as you saw throughout the show, I have been smoking a cigar. I just bought into a cigar shop slash lounge in my local area, so oh, I will most likely, when I do start doing more YouTube-ish stuff, will be uh, doing it from there. Which I'm looking, I'm hoping it turns out as well as it probably will. Okay. Bear, who are you? Yeah, what? Who, who am I? Who are you? And what do you create? And where can people find you? In their what nightmares is where they can find me. <laughs> Ooh. Keep putting on them fingers. They're going to look real funny when they get cut off. Yeah, who is Bear? Yeah. What is he doing here? Uh, I'm Bear, Gen X GM. You can find me on my channel, Bear the Gen X GM, here on YouTube. Uh, I believe in community. I believe all role playing is valid. I believe everybody should get their heads out of their asses and stop being elitist fucks, and we can all have fun together. I stream about six live games. Uh, I produce a game called Heroic. I have another game coming called Final Age, and as of today, I'm about to murder my cat. Um, and I have another game coming, which I just started working on, 
called Moonfell Under a Shattered Sky. And it's a post-apocalyptic Thundar the Barbarian Tarna from Heart of Heavy Metal D6 game. And that should be coming at some point as well. Is it the Napalachia? No, it's not it's ten generations past the apocalypse, past the moon the moon fell. All right, Mr. Max Poivin. Who are you? That's my name. What do you my create? My channel is Reaction Your Principal Gaming. Um, like as you can see in the show tonight, we're very focused on role play. What we do, I do have a, a game that is streamed on my channel, and I have a show, sometimes a talk show, a bit of a panel like that, uh, that we do occasionally. Right when we have, when I have a topic that I want to discuss, it's very about figuring stuff out. So we, I have like some of my buddies that are in the role playing with me, and we figure stuff out. Uh, so that can be interesting, I guess. Maybe not. <laughs> I'm an elitist. <laughs> I believe in tribalism. <laughs> but when it comes to role-playing game, I do believe in freedom. He but and I are it. opposite sides of the coin, right down to we both are from <laughs> Quebec, French, and English. It's hilarious. Yeah. Super yeah, well, muscular, I'm, hot as fuck, you know? I'm, I'm bizarro. <laughs> So multiple people ask Bear, is your game based on the Star Wars D6 rules or the, the, D, the West End Games D6 system? It is based on the West End D6 system, but it's my own hack of it because there are so many editions of it and so many versions of it. And honestly, when I looked at Gallant Knight's uh, new D6 uh, thing, it lost all interest for me. They, now that it's a bad game, they just made choices. I don't agree with them. D6. Go to my channel. Look for the highest watch video. 15,000 views on one called Why I Love the D6 System. So, you know. Yeah, no. All right. Well, next week we are supposed to talk about the business side of T TRPGs. If I can get some guests, <laughs> I'm telling you the dichotomy of having way too many the first time and having to pick just three to now crickets is weird. But uh, if not, well, I'll either I'll figure something else out or maybe I take the day off. Who knows? But uh, we'll, that night. otherwise, I'd be there, buddy. I know, and and we are going to cover it again. Like that is one of those that is going to keep coming up. So, uh, but anywho, with that said, I look for, thank you for all the people in chat, by the way, people watching the live stream, the live stream is going to look like it's ending. It's not. We'll be back in just a moment. I got to do this for the video side of things. So uh, if you enjoy this discussion, please like this video, subscribe to Legion of Myth and to all the panelists whose links you can find in the description. And I hope each and every one of you has, Oh, see, I, can't end it if I don't find my <laughs> pro streamer, folks. Pro streamer. And where is it? There it is. Right there. Okay, now I can do it. Uh, I hope each and every one of you has a wonderful week. <laughs>